Hope everybody's doing good. A uh, little uh, update on the machine. I was able to put a few more hours on it this past weekend. I went up to the side-by-side uh, -side blog guys uh, little event that they had. Um, was I shouldn't say little. There was, geez, I don't know how many units there. There had to have been well over a hundred. Uh, was actually a lot of fun. The mud, the mud, the mud drags. I, I call them right now at the beginning because it was really muddy. Uh, dried out in the afternoon, and uh, some great people there. Just kind of socialized and looked at different uh, different machines, setups for speakers and cargo and tires and wheels. It was really nice for somebody that hasn't been in the side by side uh, uh, game for very long to just see the variety of uh, setups and talk to the people about them and. Uh, you know, I met uh, Nick Seuss and Leonardo and uh, Doug and Rick and uh, I believe uh, Steve, Doug's brother. Uh, Doug's old man is cool as hell. I talked to him for probably, I don't know, 30 minutes. You know, we just kind of shot the shit. Some good dudes up there. Um, look forward to the fall one. Hopefully we got some upgrades done to this. And uh, it did okay. We drag raced everything under the sun um the dct actually leaving at an idle wasn't as a hindrance as i thought uh obviously it doesn't run with any of the turbo machines you know that would be uh naive to believe so but uh you know i ran a yxz a couple yxz's probably i don't know eight ten times and pretty much whoever left on the light would win the race we were just we were always neck and neck um so real comparable to that um i also ran a, a 1000 uh polaris rzr uh na naturally aspirated one and a four-seater in na naturally aspirated. And, and we're all like super close it just whoever got the better track would win there was no clear dominance by either machine um, i ran doug in their thousand r and uh somebody else was driving i believe it was andy i ran him on the thousand in the thousand r their talon thousand and you know it was always really close the times i raced doug he had another you know 200 pound guy in there uh, so it's not really fair if you're riding by yourself so i i, I probably you know we were it was they were really close i mean within half a car it's not like i was like oh i put a car link on them they were within uh half a car so it's right there with any other naturally aspirated 1000 you know it, it it did well it was a little weird to drive in the slippery stuff like the back end wanted to wash out on it even though i was in four wheel drive um it was a little bit of a handle to drive down through there and uh, several people commented on that i let drive it we don't know if it's something to do with the four-wheel drive the computer you know trying to do something with the four-wheel drive in the front causing the back end it's just really weird to drive um and i wasn't able to talk to doug or them guys how their thousand you know how their talon was doing it but there was another x owner there with identical machine to mine and he said the same thing so uh it was a little weird you know like I, I i really hard to explain it almost felt like the front end was like thought it was slipping i don't know if it was the speeds it was going at it was just it was at at higher speeds when it got a little slippery it was really hard to steer you know i almost got into somebody because of it um it's not like you drive in them conditions at high speeds all the time so it's not the end of the world uh, tires worked well everything worked well on it so that was saturday and sunday we decided to run out to silver lake sand dunes i put these ugly stickers on and uh my makeshift jbl speaker up here mount well, until i make a final decision on what type of uh setup i want to run on this which being at the side by side event really helped but anyhow we went to uh silver lake and uh was my first big day of actually running this thing more than a few hundred feet and then 
you know, obviously just, or cruising at Hassman Acres where I never really even got to go fast, just basically putting around at 10 mile an hour and climbing some hills. So I was really looking forward to Sunday and taking this thing out with another couple of uh, machines and just putting it through the paces, seeing how the suspension worked, doing some high speed stuff, and just really seeing how the horsepower, uh, you know, the lower horsepower unit did in the hills and stuff. And I got out there and we started uh, ripping around and I was in two wheel drive, six PSI in the tires. And within about five minutes of ripping around, I went over test hill and, and I was running pretty fast. Uh, the red check engine overheat light came on and really you know I this gauge cluster is in a terrible spot if you're driving aggressively you're not looking to your right and down at a little tiny screen it really should be over here where you can physically just see it you know out of the you know just by looking straight ahead because when you're running through three four foot moguls and running hard you're paying attention to what you're doing you're not looking over at a screen um, when I did notice the light was on, I pulled over immediately and the fan was running and I was like, I don't understand, you know, what's going on. So we pull over and I shut it off and, and, you know, waited like 15, 20 minutes. And then I, I turned the setting on the monitor to, uh, uh, read, uh, temperature, which is bars. It doesn't give you a digital, which is kind of another Another thing I don't really care for, you know, this day and age, you should be able to have an actual number for temperature on there, like the Polaris and the Can-Am and virtually every other manufacturer in this price range. Um, anyways, it was at four bars. I was like, oh, God, that's as high as it goes, you know. Obviously, the light comes on. Um, I'm not aware of if it'll actually shut itself down and go into limp mode if it gets too hot. Um, but I was a little flustered. You know, I, uh, you know, drove, uh, four hours to go to the sand dunes and play or three and a half anyways, to go, uh, put this thing through the paces. And I had my first mechanical gremlin, uh, you know, at that point I didn't really know what it was. All I knew is that, you know, I, I bought a $20,000 machine and, and to enjoy on the weekends and, uh, and I wasn't enjoying it very much. So at that point i was like oh, okay you know let it cool down maybe it's just got an air bubble or something i checked the coolant make sure there's nothing leaking anywhere i'd been running in the mud but i knew i had cleaned out the radiator um i you know double check make you know i could physically hear the fan running at that point i was like that's kind of weird well maybe it had an air bubble you know we've had them on snowmobiles new snowmobiles before and uh the same things kind of happened and I was like, well, maybe this is the first time I've really run it hard and got on it for a sustained amount of time, you know, more than three or 400 feet and, you know, prolonged, you know, where you're running it for 30 seconds pretty hard. And then, you know, kind of letting up and then going again because you're running over bumps and it's just a bigger area to turn it loose. And I thought, well, this is the first time I've really done this. Maybe just had air bubble. So I let it cool off, get in it. And I just kind of drive it around real slow and it's, it's staying down around two bars and I'm like, oh, okay, you know, maybe that's all it was. So I, we proceed to go ahead and make another lap around Silver Lake and start pushing it hard again. And immediately it climbs to three bars and then four bars again and the temperature light comes on, I mean, probably within a minute. So I pull over again. This time I leave it running in park because I hear the fan running. And I'm like, well, why isn't this thing cooling off? The fan is obviously running and running well. Um, I get out of the machine and I come around to the front. And I'm like, okay. As I'm walking around the front, I feel hot air blowing out this, this way towards me. Blowing out the front of the radiator. I'm like, well, you know. The fan is pushing air out the front. Well, why is the fan pushing air out the front? That's not 
that'd probably be fine in low rock crawling situations or the stuff that I had been doing, just going real slow and, and or short bursts. However, once you're going 40, 50 mile an hour, the fan is and the air coming in the radiator and the fan trying to push it out, they're fighting each other, so the radiator is getting absolutely no airflow. So a quick search on Google told me that if you look down in here, you can see, oh, if this thing will focus, right here, on the fan side, they had a problem with some talons getting out of the factory with the wires being reversed, which makes the fan run backwards. They actually had a TSB uh, come out, and it was like a day after I picked my machine up, evidently. And uh, that's pretty much what happened. You know, the, the, the fan was running backwards, and they are aware of a problem however i don't know if they planned on contacting everybody or wait until your machine blows up um was really disappointed that i wasn't contacted immediately my dealership has only sold two of these units uh, so i was pretty pretty unhappy that you know i wasn't contacted immediately upon them getting some paperwork you know i know stuff happens and you know, you get busy at a dealership, and especially that dealership, they're super busy all the time. Unfortunately, you know, it cost me a trip to Silver Lake and a real review on the machine. What I went over there for, you know, I basically wasted, uh, you know, several hundred bucks and, you know, fuel, food, a trip over there. And just, you know, just it just sucks when you buy anybody that's bought something new that's had problems with it. It doesn't make you feel good that you, you know, spent that money to have something to go enjoy. If you're like me, I work crazy hours, and on the weekends, I want to go play. I don't want to work on stuff. I just want to turn a key and go. And, uh, you know, obviously this isn't a mechanic, a super bad mechanical thing. This is a mistake. There's nothing else wrong with the machine. My concern, I spoke with my dealer. I got to take it up there today, and that's what I'm getting ready to do. It's pouring rain off. I'll, I uh, I work in the excavation business, so um, I just asked my boss, you know, if, if we're just going to be doing stuff around around the shop, I'd have the day off, like take this thing up and talk to the dealer. I called Honda. After talking to my dealer, you know, I, I said my concerns are obviously the motor could have been running hot this whole time. You know, I've never seen the light come on, but I've never had it on the temperature serene. So, I mean, basically the whole time I've run it, it could have possibly been running hot, just not to the point where the red light comes on and tells you to shut it off. Um, so I have some concerns about the longevity of my motor now and the, or the health of it. And uh, especially to a new, a new machine, you know, I mean, it's just not, it's not good for them. So... That's kind of where I'm at. I'm going to take it up there. And I asked him, like, hey, you know, is, is that something Honda would be willing to do is to maybe extend my warranty? You know, um, can we check out the health of the motor? What, what can we do here? I don't just want to get brushed off. I'm not a dummy. I've had motors apart. I've put motors together. I completely understand what happens when you overheat a motor early in its lifespan. You know, I can have head gasket feathers later on. You know, it could score from the heat and the oil thinning down, you could score, dig out the bearings a little bit and you might have a little bit lower oil pressure and it won't affect you now, but in two or three years, you know, next thing you know, I got a rod knock in the motor. So, um, you know, I have some serious concerns about, about it. And uh, my dealership kinda, you know, they're busy. They got a bunch of units in there and I understand I've actually been a service manager and so I, I get that they're not going to treat my machine with the the level of uh, concern that I am as the owner. Um, so I told them that, you know, I was just going to call Honda, which I did. And I still haven't. I, I talked to a warranty lady. She sounded like she was going to get right on top of it and that they would make anything right and make me feel perfectly comfortable with my machine. 
and that she would get the rep in the area would contact me and uh, that was yesterday she made it sound like he was going to contact me yesterday or first thing this morning and I haven't heard you know from him I'm going to obviously take it up to the dealership but you know if they're going to cover my first service for me to get the baked oil out of there or do something for me um, I prefer to have a extended warranty um, you know but we're going to see what they I'm not really sure why my screen's pulsating like that. It's kind of crazy. But it uh, could be because it's such a weird light out there. But, uh, yeah, so that's where I'm at. You know, like, I, I still haven't been able to thoroughly test this machine out. And, uh, I mean, obviously, we run it a few laps out there. But I, I just wasn't able to do. I was so concerned with the temperature of it and then getting it off the dunes without overheating it too many times. And, you know just you know so basically i just idled off the dunes i was like oh well this kind of sucks so just just you know just disappointing and you buy honda with the thoughts that they do things above and beyond the other people and something as simple as that uh was missed you know i understand human or human error you can't take that out but uh it's just kind of a bummer you know it's it, hopefully this is the only hiccup that I have and they get it fixed and take care of me in some way shape or form um, and we uh, we're up and running we have absolutely no issues from there on out so I'm gonna do the the service a little early on it uh, just because everything got so hot um, and I'm not real you know every fluid has its point where it becomes starts breaking down and uh you know oil has no you know is no different than any other fluid you know there's a certain temperature where it starts to break down and it just can't do what it's supposed to be doing the problem with having a transmission hooked to the engine is all that heat translates into the transmission and now you got that oil very hot so and so that translates into hot clutches and it just kind of snowballs so i just want to uh, i'm kind of a maintenance nut so i just want to make sure that uh everything's up and going so a little bit long-winded getting ready to load her up take her up there and uh we'll see i'll give you guys an update on what honda does for me uh if anything i hope they do i would hate to have to uh you know ha have any issues with this machine down the road um because you know i'm just the type of person that would never buy it you know another honda product again you know that's the way i that's the way i am with things um i bought a new ford dually and it was nothing but problems and i will i will never own another new ford product uh you know ford ended up buying it back but it was uh, a long process and i basically had a seventy thousand dollar truck that you know was in the shop for the first month and a half that i owned it so you know i just once once a manufacturer rubs me the wrong way i just i will never buy their product again so hopefully they do me right and uh you know i like the machine other than that it's gonna be fun uh my wife likes it she's uh gonna take it hopefully they can get it done pretty quick she's gonna take she wants to take it friday with her girlfriends and go up north um, which is kind of a first for my wife to kind of want to go by herself and go do something like that and that's why I got the DCT trans. I don't want to worry about her blowing a belt on the side of the trail. You know, you also don't want to worry about them overheating on the side of the trail. So I'm glad we found this issue before she took it someplace and is out in the woods by herself with other girls that really don't know uh, mechanical aspects of things. You know, that's kind of why I bought a Honda. You know, I'm just, I don't want to be concerned about reliability. Um, and... Uh, you know, I don't want to have to get out of work and run uh, way up north to make sure my wife is okay. Because we're honestly thinking about getting a second unit. And, uh, you know, I may buy an R. I, I don't know. Um, I may buy a, a 1,000R for me, and she might want to ride this one with her friends. I, I don't know yet. So we're, we're kind of up in the air on that. But a little update on where I'm at. Have a good one.